What do you think is your secret for getting that 99 plus? I can only hope that that's gonna push them to do their best, to study, and serve the people, of course. Mm. Almost always, if you're gonna be a doctor, serve the people, serve the underserved. Yes, para sa bayan. Apo, para sa bayan, para ate. everyone, I'm Kate Conanan, a medical doctor from the Philippines. For today's episode, we will be talking about another important matter regarding application for medical school, which is the NMAT or the National Medical Admission Test. So if you want to know more about NMAT, please keep on watching. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, hit that notification bell so you will be notified once I upload a new video. So without further ado, let's get to it! So to tell us more about the National Medical Admission Test, we will be joined by Dr. Michelle Lau. She is a graduate of BS Biology Batch 2015 from University of the Philippines, Manila. She is currently studying at the University of the Philippines College of Medicine. She obtained a stellar 99 plus percentile score from her NMAT last year, 2019. With her NMAT scores, she was accepted with both schools of the University of the Philippines College of Medicine and the University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center. She is currently a medical student. So help me welcome Dr. Michelle Lau. Hello! Welcome hi! Hi po! Dr. Michelle Lau. She will be <laughs> helping us understand more about the National Medical Admission Test and tell us her guides and tips on how to review for the upcoming online and math exam. So let's start with the National Medical Admission Test. So what is NMAT? What is it for? The NMAT is the requirement for you mm -mm. to uh, apply to medical schools. Mm -mm. For almost all medical schools, they require you to submit your NMAT grade in order for them to assess whether or not you meet their cutoff and whether mm -mm. or not you're suitable for their med school. Mm -mm. What is the real purpose of it? Is it really needed for application for med school? So it's a must? Yes, po. And for some students, especially those with a background that's not in the hard sciences, po, it's mm -mm. a kind of way to gauge whether or not mm -mm. you have the knowledge needed for med school because the subjects tested for NMAT, they're the core subjects that you need in order to proceed with med school. So who is eligible to take the exam? So what are the qualifications for it? Actually, yeah, a lot of people ask me about mm -mm. this. Um, basically, any course can take mm -mm. the NMAT. And even for med school, if you come from any undergrad, you're still mm -mm. eligible for medical school. There's no limit or there's no choice of courses that mm -mm. can or cannot apply for medical schools. I actually know a lot of doctors that are engineers or like mm -mm. previous course nila, interior design. So any BS or BA course, they could take the NMAT? Yes, but mm -mm. So when and where is it held? Kasi yung sa akin, that time, UST. Yeah, it's still mm -hmm. in UST. Yung school na nakakapag-conduct ng NMAT. Or if Philippines-based ka, UST is the only school that could conduct it. Are there any other schools from the provinces? Ganyan. I'm not sure about the provinces. But I know if you're abroad, like for example, there's also um a uh, office that lets you take the NMAT if you're based in the United States. Mm -hmm. You have to go to their office in person to take the NMAT. Um, actual din siyang exam. So, wala talagang computer-generated na exam. Ito palang yes. first online exam, if ever. Yeah, August. because of COVID. Because yeah. of COVID. How long is the validity of the NMAT exam? The validity of your NMAT score is two years. Mm -mm. So, you have to use that score to mm -mm. apply for med school for the next two years. Otherwise, you have to take the NMAT again. again. Yes. There are limits to taking it. Because some have said na after three tri tries daw of taking the NMAT, it will not already be eligible. So, as far as I checked, I think mm -hmm. you can take the NMAT on a limited number of times. You have this clause that the weather is the October and the March NMAT. Mm -hmm. So if you take that within the same year, like mm -hmm. if you take it October 2019 and then March 2020, um, 
that's gonna be counted as the same academic year. So uh, the score okay. that's gonna be submitted to your med school is the higher score that you get. Or if you take it more than two times, they're gonna indicate that you've already taken the NMAT multiple times. So medical schools usually consider the first NMAT score. Some naman consider the higher NMAT score. If you're applying yes, for a scholarship grants, I know some medical schools that will take the first NMAT score pero applying to be accepted to a certain medical school without the scholarship per se, they'll consider your higher NMAT score. Yeah, the higher so, score. Mm-mm. When was the last one? You na canceled. Was the people that were scheduled to take the March NMAT? It was canceled yes. because of COVID. Pero yeah. are all students who want to take uh, medicine still required to take the NMAT exam for August? Even if meron um, tayong ano, CHED memorandum, right? They could apply for med school without taking it. What's your take on um, that? To the extent of my knowledge po kasi, Mm-mm. the online August exam is for the takers that were supposed to take it ng March 2020. For mm. the CHED memorandum, it was only applicable for academic year 2020 to 2021. Mm-mm. So that's my batch, Mm-mm. technically. Mm-mm. So, um, this is for the incoming school year that's going to start August to September 2020. Mm-mm. So, it's only for this year. So, if you're going to apply for med schools next year, you still have to take your NMAT and submit your NMAT score. So basically, parang required pa din siya. So, how is the application process for it? Sign up using the NMAT uh, website, I think. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And then, after signing up, you submit your payment and then you're already registered for the NMAT. And then, what are the requirements that are needed for it? You have to submit a certificate that you're of, I think, senior standing or you're part of the graduating batch. And the fee is 1,900. It's still the same. Because <laughs> I've included here my application way back in 2014. Pa, na na <laughs> <laughs> so, yun you will have to apply through online, the Center of Educational Measurement Incorporated, and then they will verify your email address. And then from that, you will have to pay for the application form. No? We'll also be giving parang pra- practice set exams, inclusive of it, the bus. So yes. The pra- practice exam, yung map mo for the USC campus map for the exam itself. So ito, yan. Meron kaming NMAT practice set part 1, tsaka yung practice set part 2. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. mga pwede mong gamitin at saka yung supplemental handout <laughs> na flashback ako dun Uh-oh. sa practice exam oh my Uh-oh. god hindi <laughs> ba yung ginamit mong pang review or nag apply ka for yeah. review center <laughs> I went to review center pero madam- like, malaking tulong yung practice exam sa CEM oo nga, ako din yung lang ginamit ko yung sa practice exam ng CEM kasi sumabay siya sa board exam ko noon so, ito siya, oh registration God. fee na 500 saka 1 for na testing fee. So, I did not have the time to apply pa for review centers sa Manila, ganyan. Usually, meron, ba? So, self-review lang talaga. <laughs> so, they will also give that application other information saka yung notice of admission. So, yeah. for the examination day itself, um, usually, how many days ba yung NMAT? It's just one day po. Mm-mm. And then, um, what are the components of the exam or Anong oras siya? Usually, nagsa-start, nag-i-end, ganyan. Oh, I remember my exam. I think it was 8 a.m. Mm-mm. And then it ended around 3 to 4 p.m. And the reason why there's a part 1, part 2 is because part 1, it's the perceptual acuity, inductive, quantitative. And so basically, it's two big chunks and Mm-mm. then four topics each. Who are the hard subjects? Ay, sila yung physics. mga physics, biology, yung mga Yes, soxi and chemistry. Mm. Which of the two yung mas mahirap para sa mga students mo? Or ikaw, personally? Well, personally, I think it was part one. Same. <laughs> because if you have the background na in part two, and because for part two, you can study for it talaga. Like, if you know and you're confident in your knowledge, you know, that you can tackle any kind of questions that part two might bring. But for part one, it's really a Mm-mm. random thing. Eh? Like, Mm-mm. sometimes they give you some very hard pictures and tititigan mo na lang talaga until, like, you give up. Yeah, it's harder to 
um, prepare for it. Mm-hmm. Or it's not scary because mm-hmm. for part one, especially, you can practice for it and there are strategies on how to answer it properly and quickly. Mm-hmm. Do you have any questions or like tips for them on how to study for the part one? Did you a lot more time in studying for the part one than the part two? Because part two were part of our undergrad din na mga yes, subjects. Well, so, mas may idea tayo. So, how did you divide your time? I think I only spent a week studying part one because it's mostly practice. So, you just have to train your mind to recognize the patterns, to see which ones are the same. But my best suggestion, and this was suggested to me pa by, by, another, by like an upperclassman that I had met before, is to bring a lot of erasers to NMAT. Especially during the perceptual and inductive. They mm-hmm. give you pictures mm-hmm. and you have to spot which ones are the same or which mm-hmm. ones are different. Mm-hmm. The pattern is usually there are two pictures that are the same, like exactly the same. So those two, you block it out na. Mm-hmm. And you can use the erasers to put it on the pictures themselves where it's less strain on your mind and it's easier for you to recognize ah. the rest of the pattern. That's such a great suggestion. Mm-hmm. I like a really big eraser in. For erasers yeah. in. No? At the end of the perceptual, there's this part where they give you sentences. Oh. Like consecutive sen- sentences, which like the only differences are one letter, Mm-mm. one comma, or they're missing a period. So you can use the erasers to block it out and look at the letters or the punctuation marks one by one mm-hmm. until you see them and which ones are different. So, yeah, erasers really help. You should really buy a lot of erasers. Yeah, they're so strategic. Mo din talaga dapat, no? <laughs> Yung yeah. hindi rin talaga siya more of the concepts, ganyan. Ang dami mong kailangan na gawing mga strategies. At parang ano. For na yun. Mm. <laughs> yeah, parang shortcuts lang siya. <laughs> oh, no. May mga tricks din behind it. Uh, what can you give mga tips for the day itself? Oh my God, for the day itself, bring a jacket. <laughs> oh, super lamig. <laughs> Ang lamig sa UST, sa buong part one. Mm-hmm. Parang nagkakala na ako mag-answer kasi nanginig na talaga ako. Mm-hmm. Tapa ako ng aircon. Uh-oh. So, bring a jacket talaga just in case. Bring mm-hmm. enough food. Because mm-hmm. more often than not, especially in UST, all of the restaurants are gonna be full. Tama. And Punong-puno. it's better to, yeah, it's better to eat in the classroom or eat mm-hmm. near where you're testing mm-hmm. so that you spend less time having to walk around and you're less tired once part two comes. For the exam, you will have to check your room number ba? Or schedule? I think the advice I can give is like have Mm-mm. a friend in USD because prior to the end, Matt, they'll give you your room number and the building. If you know somebody from USD, you can just ask them, where can I find this building so that you don't have to show up as early. <laughs> the good thing is we have a friend from USD nga. She helped us find the building. So that's a good tip as well. What else? What to bring? Shading naman siya, di ba? So, mga pencils. Yes. Yan uh, and for the NMAT po, kasi you're not allowed to bring your phone. Mm. You're only allowed to bring the clear envelope that Mm-mm. shows the stuff you have. <laughs> so, yeah, you should always remember to leave your phone at home or if you have a car, leave it in the car. Because that might, ano, give you extra hassle pa. How about calculators? Can scientific calculators be used? No po, the NMAT doesn't allow calculators. Mm-hmm. And this is another thing um, mm-hmm. that students have to prepare for because, mm-hmm. yan nga, sa undergrad, sanay na sanay na tayo na mag-calculator. Nalimutan mm-hmm. <laughs> na natin mag-math. Uh-oh. So, it's also an important part to sharpen up your math skills mm-hmm. be Kasi able manual to solve things quickly <laughs> yeah <laughs> for another um strategy for the nmat essay especially for quantitative physics mm-hmm. ganun, is that a lot of the choices that they give you the numbers are virtually the same so you don't mm-hmm. have to finish all your computations actually you can just finish at least like the first two digits of the answer and then mm-hmm. you can already narrow down your answer by then Ang galing, ang galing, ang galing, ang galing mo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ang galing na mga tips mo. Ready check Mm-mm. choices if Mm-mm. it matches. And if it matches, parang tapos ka na, you can move Mm-mm. on to the next one na. If you're studying for the NMAT, most probably, especially for like physics or chemistry, they won't dive deep into Mm-mm. the kinds of questions that they ask. Mm. Usually, you just need to know the formulas and it's plug and play na nun. There's a lot of formulas like, na mon- like napuno yung whiteboard ko nun. Mm-mm. So, um, 
for my review classes naman, I'll be providing a formula memorization sheet so mm. that they know which formulas that they have to memorize. But if you're self-studying, every single formula you encounter, you have to write it down. And also the name of that formula. Let's say uh, the formula for converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. Mm -mm. You, have, you can't just write the formula itself for you have a separate sheet of mm -hmm. the names of the formulas para um as your refresher you just take that sheet and then you write down every single formula and you know what you don't remember yeah tama tama tapos yun na lang yung i-review mo parang a day before or hours before the exam para ma oh, oh bago matulog oh, you're yun yung 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 formulas mo. pa sa ulo ko titingnan mo yon mm -hmm. oh. the part 2 exam how did you prepare for it Part two, po. yeah, you just need mm. to study and master a lot of the topics. And uh, a good part of that is the NMAT tests for very general. It won't dive too deep. Mm -mm. So you have to have a general understanding. And another trick and another way that the NMAT might try to trick you is mm. um, in physics or chemistry, mm -mm. they'll give you the wrong kinds of units that you plug into the formula. Mm. Let's say for molarity, they give you um, um, deciliters instead of milliliters. And you have to be careful of that because if that's the case, you still have to convert it. Convert it, it no. first, yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. If, if so not, may you might mga, arrive at the wrong answer. May formula ka na, pati conversions, kailangan mo pa rin aralan. <laughs> and yeah. they will give the correct answer to that deciliter that you were so, trying to solve, right? So, para yeah, they'll give you na, the correct answer for oh, oh, Yeah, I think it's tama. Oh, oh, eh, no? tama siya, pero mali pala. <laughs> also, do you think the books that you've had in the undergrad are sufficient for it already? Or do they still have to buy another set of review materials for the part two? For me, no. You really don't need to. Even if you weren't uh, from a hard sciences background, there's mm. a lot of online resources. Uh, I think for YouTube, the Khan Academy MCAT review, which mm -hmm. is kind of the NMAT for the US, it covers a lot of topics that the NMAT also tackles. Mm -hmm. So that helps. If you can spend, mm -hmm. well, maybe you can if you need it. But for me, it, you don't really need to buy a lot of extra materials, especially mm -hmm. since it's a very general kind of exam. Just maximize the resources that the CEM gave and the online resources. And dami naman downloadables na mga resources, right? For example, um, the student could not take the exam. Can she reschedule it or like have a refund from the oh, CEM? Sadly, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Because when I check the CEM website, po, um, mm -mm. the schedule that you applied for, that's final. If you, yeah. let's say for example, you scheduled yourself for the October NMAT and then you mm -mm. can, you have to pay a separate fee to take the March NMAT. So for the preparation for the NMAT, how is your NMAT study system? The advice I give most often is that you shouldn't jump into the sample exams, Kagat, especially mm -hmm. if you don't have the background in those subjects. The NMAT gives you the breakdown of the topics and also what specific subject matters are covered there. It's better to study it and then gain a mastery and know where you're weak before you jump into the practice exams. Because what I was told was the CEM samplexes, they were the most accurate for mm -hmm. how the NMAT's gonna be. Mm -hmm. You, it's a cycle of answering it and then reviewing what you got wrong, like studying it even more and then answering it again. Mm -hmm. And then I put myself a limit of, I had to keep doing that until I got 45 out of 50 correct. So you kept on rationalizing where you went wrong. And what, uh, how did you arrive at the correct answer? Nag-review center po ako, review pero medyo hindi rin ako pumapasok na ni. Eh. How was the review center? <laughs> I attended the PIX review center po. I think it was two to three weeks. I think it was only weekdays po. Eight to five class siya for three weeks if you will apply for review center. And what are the review materials that you use during that time? Mostly use the ones from CEM. And because mm -hmm. I was from UPM, BS Bio, kasi of the subjects that, were taught, that are taking during NMAT, Mm -mm. They were already covered in the curriculum of my course. Mm -hmm. So I just went back to review those subjects and then answered again. Mm -hmm. Since the NMAT is a timed exam, if you're practicing and especially if you're answering the samplex test, you have to time yourself. Better to give an allowance of, of mm -hmm. about 10 minutes. It 
helps you practice answering quickly. Super time pressured kasi yung NMAT, di ba? Parang ilang minutes na lang, you have not yet shaded the answers. So what was your strategy <laughs> back then? Did you answer and shade or you answered all of it first before shading? I always do the answer and shading muna. <laughs> Mine kasi was like to answer it all and then shade at the last part. The important part, especially for those who want to study, to know the kind of questions that they give, especially for the computational, like quantitative physics and chemistry. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Sometimes they purposely give you questions that take a long time to answer. You have to strategize which questions to skip and to know what the most probable answer is. Every single question in the NMAT is just one point. Spend uh, like, let's say, five minutes answering a question, you get that point, yes, uh, pero uh, you might lose time answering the other stuff that uh, you might have better knowledge in. During this um, pandemic season kasi, no, regarding NMAT exam, which will be held online, can you tell us more about your <laughs> review classes on how to get a 99 plus percentile score for NMAT. So I'm conducting po an online review class. Um, all the July batches are full now, unfortunately, but my August MWF class is still open for whoever would want to enroll. I still have very fresh knowledge of mm -mm. what I studied for the NMAT, so I'll be able to teach well. And I think I'm pretty confident in all the subjects that I took because mm -mm. I studied them. The way mm -mm. I studied for the NMAT is I wouldn't like move on from a topic unless I fully understood it and all the ways that questions could be asked. I'm going to teach the students how to do that. And also I'm summarizing mm -mm. Um, all of my review notes so that I could give it to my students and the enrollees in my review class book. Based on your actual NMAT study system, in the step one, you will be providing online lectures. Next one is to assess them. Because um, from my previous study, I have a lot of sample questions. Since I still remember the last NMAT, I... <laughs> <laughs> Mga high yield. And then, uh, can you tell us what platform um, you will be using just in case our viewers want to join you in your review classes? Uh, I'm going to be teaching using Zoom, and then okay. the review materials are going to be released uh, on the Google Drive. Where the lectures are going to be 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. via Zoom. <laughs> the last one would be the remedial sessions, no? Yes, but because the, the mm -hmm. way you study po is when you answer and there are things that you don't understand, you go back and you try mm -hmm. to know where you went wrong and what mm -hmm. you need to study. So the remedial sessions are actually catered to tackle to mm. the topics that a lot of people don't understand or they have difficulty in. Make sure that they're fully prepared for all the questions that might come. I also have the option of only availing of the review materials that I need. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So if they want to self-study, they can also use. Um, what I can recommend that's really useful are the YouTube videos, actually. You have to make sure that you understand all of it. And self-study is very feasible naman if you want mm -hmm. to do it for the NMAT. But it takes a while. I think it, I studied two months in advance for NMAT. Tapos kasi madami din mga YouTube videos showing how to do the quantitative exam. So simulate sila ng mga exam tapos in-explain nila, no? Pero I will also be including in the description box some of the review materials na I have to share with them in addition to your um, review material, so you could check. Can you tell us more about your schedule, the three-week schedule for your August batch two? Will it be possible for the students to like finish? Well, I'll be giving lecture sessions um, according to that schedule. Mm -hmm. Like um, chemistry is going to be first and biology. It's going to be a session of one day, na 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. with a one-hour lunch break. And it's going to mm -hmm. be the redirection lecture. And hopefully, I can cover all the topics needed. Mm -hmm. But in between and after the review sessions, self-study is also needed, especially mm -hmm. to understand the lectures. If you're enrolled in my review sessions, naman, you can ask me anytime uh -huh. if you have questions or if you want me to explain a specific kind mm -hmm. of topic or question in the reviewer for you. Mm -hmm. And I still have all, all of the solutions that I made like when I answered the sample exam. So I can still teach you how to answer it properly. So for example, they will not be uh, reviewing in your online class. Uh, what's the ideal parang timetable for them? So sabi mo kanina kung review center usually two to three weeks siya. Pero in your case, it was two months. 
So, think, yes, thinking well, mo, how will you really prepare for it? With the review center, it gives you a refresher. If you've already mm-hmm. taken it, if you already taken those subjects, it gives you a refresher of the things you might have forgotten. But if you're studying it anew, you have to take some time really to fully understand the concept. So while because for me, I did one month muna of understanding, refreshing all the concepts first, and then answering. So if they're going to self-study, especially after my review class or any re- review center, they have to be able to allot some time to study for themselves and also mm-hmm. practice answering. Because the review center is just providing you a guide or run through through all the subjects. But at the end of it, you still have to consolidate what you've learned and you still have to master it on your own, diba? Right? Uh, we will talk about the application proper for the med school. So, Dr. Michelle Lau have provided some of the <laughs> schools, no mga ano nila, medical school requirements, tsaka yung mga NMAT cut-off scores natin. We will be giving yes, to them our scholarship grant. Uh, um, the med schools each have a cut-off score, and I think that's why the NMAT is in a percentile rank thing. It's to know where you rank in that pool of prospective medical students. So let's say, for example, UPCM only accepts 90 and above. That means that like you have to be within that top 10% to be able to even apply. So each school has a different cutoff score. And Other students are like uh, retaking the exam, diba? Because they're aiming for yeah. a higher end math score to be able to be admitted to a certain medical school. And I've um, put here some of the schools na may mga requirements for med school. So this one from AUF. So you, these ones are from Doc Michelle Lau from UPCM. These are the requirements. So she listed them down. So, and yung mga scholarships then na ina offer nila no nandun dun yes, sa ASMPH. Some schools ka nagapply. I, I only applied to ano po UE and UP. <laughs> you were both accepted in both of the schools. <laughs> the yes. Uh, run through this one. So from USP, this one from UERM, <laughs> SLPM. <laughs> Also, tapos sa PLM. Uh, if you're gonna apply for PLM, mm-hmm. they have a separate exam pa besides mm-hmm. NMAT. Like, you have to submit your NMAT score. PLM also has their own MCAT. So, if you're applying for PLM, okay. there's another exam for it pa. I've got this from Nurse Human. So, I've asked the permission of Nurse Human to post this NMAT cutoff score. So, nilis niya dito yung mga NMAT cutoff scores niya. A list of the medical schools. No, for example, you're wishing to apply to. So, ito yung mga NMAT nila. 90. Tapos, sa St. Luke's, 90 then. So, <laughs> in depending order sila. So, the lowest cutoff score that you could get is 40. Yes, po. For you to be admitted to a medical school. No? Yes, po. Can you share with us the scholarship grants that future medical students could have with their NMAT scores or yeah, yung mga G1 nila? A lot of people were offered was that um, the LSU HSI offers a 70% off scholarship, especially for those with a high percentile rank. The best scholarship that I know of is, of course, the UP College of Medicine scholarship. Um, if it's under DOH or the college itself, your tuition is free. UERM naman, the scholarships that I know of are, if your GWA is 1.75 and above, it's free tuition for your first year. And if your GWA is in between 175 to 2.0, it's a 50% discount. Uh, for PLM, if you're a resident of Manila and you can show proof that you're residing in Manila, you also have free tuition. Thank you, Doc, for those information. Can you give us a message to those who will take the end match? Just that don't be scared. It's gonna be your first thing to tackle. You still have medical school, and this is only gonna be a stepping stone for greater things. You have to believe in yourself, believe in your abilities, and also make sure that you study well because mm-hmm. this is for your medical education. And do your best. Kaya kaya naman yung ninety nine plus for sure. Yeah. What do you think is your secret for getting that 99 plus? Well, discipline talaga. Even if you don't feel motivated to study, you have to know that this exam is going to dictate which medical school you're going to go to and what your the next five years of your future is going to be. And I can only hope that that's going to push them to do their best to study and 
serve the people, of course, mm. almost always. If you're gonna be a doctor, serve the people, serve the underserved. Yes, para sa bayan. Tapo, para sa bayan, para ate. Thank you so much, Dr. Michelle Lau, for sharing your knowledge, experience, oh. and time with us. <laughs> to the NMAT takers, see you in white uniform. Yes. Kaya ni yan. <laughs> Bring jacket. Thank you, Doc. Thank Bye you so guys. much. Stay safe always. And then, I'll just put the link where you could enroll to Dr. Michelle Lau's review classes for the NMAT in the description box below. So you could get yes, the August her. batch is still open. Yes. <laughs> it's only 800 pesos for the whole duration of the review. And that already includes all the review materials now. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Doc. So that's it for this episode. I hope you learned a thing or two from this video. If you have any comments, clarifications, suggestions, or questions about NMAT, please comment below. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you have any other videos that you want me to talk about, please comment as well. Thank you for watching today's episode. See you in my next video. Bye! Bye everyone!